Today we will uh, talk about the gonads and their endocrine control in fishes. So that axis which is actually regulating the gonadal development and its endocrine control, it is called as hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Hypothalamus plays the major role and it regulates the synthesis and release of gonadotropins through the multiple neurohormones from the pituitary gland. But other than these gonadotropins which are released by a pituitary gland, there are many other hormones which are involved in gonadal development in fish. So this is a complicated process of gonadal development because not only gonadal steroids, rather other hormones are also involved and regulating the gonadal development and different stages of maturation, including the release of gametes from both male and female fish. For example, potentially the other hormones which may be involved or are involved in control of um, HPG axis, they could be GABA, pituitary adenylate, cyclase activating peptide, peptide, norepinephrine, neuropeptide, serotonin, jalin, leptin, glutamate. So these uh, hormones are involved positively to play their role in gonadal development. Rather, dopamine, it could have a negative effect on um, the function of gonadotropins in HPG axis. So there are other hormones which are associated with the growth and metabolism in fish. For example, insulin, uh, um, insulin IGF-1, glutamate, leptin, and ghrelin. So these are uh, associated with the growth and um, the rate of metabolism or the health of fish. So as we know that in um, process of gradual development, health of fish or the energy reserves in its body, they play an important role. If the fish is not healthy enough or it doesn't have enough um, uh, protein and lipid resources, reserves in its body, then uh, entry into uh, the maturation, it wouldn't be allowed by HPG excess. So energy reserves and the body mass or the condition of the fish, they play an important role in uh, positive functioning of HPG excess. So once um, granodotrophin releasing hormones are uh, released from hypothalamus, in response to this secretion, pituitary gland also release two uh, hormones. They are called as follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is known as GTH1 in fishes, while LH is known as GTH2 in fishes. Release of um, GnRH from hypothalamus, it increases the amount of messenger RNAs encoding gonadotropin subunits. So there are two subunits, alpha and beta subunits of FSH and LH. So the response of uh, the gonadotropin subunits, messenger RNAs to GnRH, GnRH in fish, this is a differential response. So uh, same uh, amount of uh, GnRH or same concentration of GnRH released at different times of maturation or gonadal development, it could have different impacts um, on the different types of cells in gonads. And it depends upon the gender of the fish too. So the same hormone, same concentration, but it may play a different role in male or female fishes. For example, in maturing uh, salmonids, GnRH elevates uh, pituitary messenger RNA, which is encoding for GP alpha, glycoprotein, and FSH alpha, but not that of LH alpha subunit. Three different forms of GnRH receptors, they have been identified in the brain of uh, Seabream and Nile therapia. So there is GnRH1, GnRH2, and GnRH3. So there are three different types of receptors which have been identified for, for GnRH in fishes. And these all um, receptors, they have uh, uh, LH stimulating activity in mature females. However, that form which is most abundant in pituitary of mature fish, that is GnRH1. And it is least potent in inducing LH release. So the different receptors, they are present um, at different levels, at different stages in different genders of fish. And they give different responses to the secretion of 
GnRH. Gonotropic hormones or gonotropins, which are released from the pituitary gland, which are actually FSH and LH, they have uh, two distinct type of receptors, um, which have been identified in fish gonads. Um, that is FSHR and LHR. Their expression is also differential. For example, it depends upon um, the sex of the fish and at different developmental stages. So these receptors, they are produced or they are shut down at different stages of gonadal development. FSHR not only show a preference for FSH, but they also respond to LH. Opposite to that, LH receptor, they specifically allow binding of LH only and don't show any activity for FSH. So these two different receptors, they have different types of activities. In female fish, FSHR is associated with vitrogenesis, which is for synthesis of uh, uh, vitrogenin protein. And uh, it is also involved in recruitment of two uh, new oocyte generations. While LHR is prevalent during oocyte maturation and ovulation. So the uh, LHR is more related to the last uh, stages or the final stages of gonadal development, while FSH is more related to initial uh, oocyte development in fish. While in case of males, FSHR expression is observed in satellite cells. And this expression is observed in interstitial Leydig cells as well, together with LHR. So LHR is observed in Leydig cells where testosterone is synthesized. Expression of LHR in males is consistently related with spermiation and spawning. So the higher level of LH is observed when a male fish is permeating and it is spawning. So again, here in males, LH is also related to uh, final stages of maturation. Here in this figure, we can um, see what different roles they are being played by the different uh, gonadotropins. So we have two gonadotropins, FSH and LH. Leydig cells has receptors both for FSH and LH. And in response to these two granotropin, Leydig cells, they produce testosterone. This testosterone is further converted into 11 keto testosterone or estradiol 17 beta. 11 keto testosterone, the higher level of them, they uh, stimulate satellite cells. And these are positive arrows, they are uh, showing a positive or uh, inducing response, while this red arrow is showing an inhibitory response. So in response to E2 and 11KT satellite cells, they, are, um, they initiate spermatogonial stem cells renewal factor. And in presence of this renewal factor, spermatogonia, they undergo renewal. Renewal of spermatogonia means division, mitotic division of uh, spermatogonia, which is further uh, undergoes a proliferation. So uh, all these uh, spermatogonia, they start undergoing a number of mitotic divisions. Other than these uh, renewal factor, satellite cells, they also activate activin B and IGF-1. And this IGF-1 and activin B, they also play a positive role in spermatogonial proliferation. On the other side, 11-KT is also playing a role in 17-alpha-20-beta dihydroxypregnenone. And this DHP is considered as an important maturation-inducing hormone in the later stages of spermatogenesis. So here we can see that DHP is involved in meiosis of uh, spermatogonia or scanty spermatocytes and it is also involved in uh, spermogenesis which means the spermatids are being transformed into sperms and this stage is being regulated by DHP. This DHP is also um, stimulating the synthesis of carbonic anhydrase which is an enzyme in presence of carbonic anhydrase there is an increase in seminal plasma pH and this increase uh, in seminal plasma pH is responsible for activation of sperms once they are released in water, which is related to 
sperm maturation. So DHP is involved in meiosis of spermatogenesis, it is involved in spermiogenesis, and it is involved in sperm maturation. HPG axis in female. So here, um, hypothalamus, it is releasing uh, GnRH, which is FSH and LH. And both FSH and LH, they play different uh, roles at different uh, stages of oocyte maturation. So the first, which is FSH, once it is released at an initial stage of um, vitlogenesis or oocyte formation, um, at this stage, this FSH, which is released um, uh, by the pituitary gland, it uh, stimulates the granul granulosa cells in, um, in oocytes. And these granulosa cells, they synthesize estosterone, uh, they synthesize estradiol, and this estradiol regulates uh, the rate of vitlogenesis, which is uh, synthesized by the liver. And this vitlogenin and the lipids, they are absorbed by these oocytes, and then they enter in uh, the secondary growth uh, stages of their um, oogenesis. So at this stage, um, the regulatory role is more taken up by LH. So LH is regulating the formation of germinal vesicle, which is the nucleus of uh, oocyte. And then there is migration of this GV or uh, germinal vesicle. And then this germinal vesicle is broken down. Now uh, it go towards a peripheral site of that oocyte. And here, um, instead of LH, MIS, it takes the control because these are the later uh, stages of oogenesis when the egg will be mature. Um, there would be formation of um, uh, vitrogenin or the yolk plates and uh, there would be um, hydration of eggs and egg would be, uh, egg will increase in its size and it will be ready to rupture its uh, membrane and being spawned. So at this stage, MIS, which is uh, DHP, again, as observed in males, uh, so this DHP is considered as maturation-inducing hormone or maturation-inducing steroid. So uh, both these HPG axis in males and females, it works through um, that feedback control mechanism. And with the involvement of uh, hypothalamus, pituitary, and gonadal hormones, that process of um, maturation is completed in male and female. Fish. 